If you've ever seen the schematic for a switch mode power supply design, then you've probably seen this configuration which uses an array of capacitors on the output. And the first question most people ask when they see this is, why do we configure it this way? Because you may know that the total capacitance of multiple capacitors in parallel is simply just the sum of their individual capacitances. So you could easily replace this array of multiple capacitors with just one single larger one and get the same performance, right? Well, not exactly. And that's what today's video is about. We are going to do a deep dive into the mechanism of operation of the capacitor and learn about some of the practical design considerations that engineers have to make when using them to filter out noise or output voltage ripple in the case of the switch mode power supply. The lessons that we learned today will be applicable to much more than just switch mode power supply design. So even if you aren't working with one of those, you'll still find a lot of value in this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the role that the output capacitor plays in the switch mode power supply. Now I've already covered this in great detail in previous videos, so if you want to go check those out, there will be a link in the description. But to give you a brief summary, the role that the output capacitor plays in a switch mode power supply is to filter out the voltage ripple that is created by the rapid switching of the MOSFET. I think the best way to understand how the capacitor accomplishes this task is to just view it as a variable resistor whose resistance changes depending on the frequency of the signal it is interacting with. An ideal capacitor can be modeled in the frequency domain using this equation right here, where omega is your frequency and then C is the capacitance value of the capacitor measured in farads. So with this equation, we can see that the capacitor's impedance is inversely proportional to the frequency of the signal. That is to say, to a very high frequency signal, a capacitor will just look like a very, very low impedance. In fact, you can call it like a short circuit in some cases. And then on the other end of the spectrum, to a very low frequency or even a DC signal, a capacitor will just look like an open circuit, something with infinite impedance essentially. So in the case of our switch mode power supply design, when we place that capacitor between the output voltage and ground, effectively what it's doing is providing a very, very low impedance pathway to ground for our high frequency signal. And then it is essentially just leaving alone our the DC component of our signal. But that's what we're left with is a nice smooth DC output with not a lot of uh, voltage ripple or noise. This simulation demonstrates the mechanism quite well. Here we have a signal that has both an AC and a DC component. And notice how when we place our capacitor between the output and ground, it essentially just eliminates the AC portion of that signal and we're left with only the DC part of the signal. This characteristic is what allows capacitors to play such a vital role in smoothing the output voltage ripple in a switch mode power supply. Capacitors can also be used to create various types of filters which we'll actually cover in later videos. So now that we understand how an ideal capacitor behaves, it's time to step into the real world where things can get a little messy. You see, in reality, electronic components have imperfections known as parasitic elements. These are undesirable and unintentional characteristics that exist in all electronic components, and they negatively affect the performance of the component in some way. One of these parasitic elements that exists in capacitors, which we will talk about today, is known as the equivalent series resistance, or ESR for short. There are actually several consequences to the parasitic ESR, but the one we're gonna focus on today is how it affects the capacitor's ability to filter out the high frequency noise. So like the name sounds, ESR can be modeled as a simple resistor that goes in series with the capacitor, like this diagram shows. There are a number of factors that contribute to ESR in a capacitor, including things such as the electrode material, the dielectric, and simply just the leads that connect to the plates of the capacitor. Every capacitor has some amount of ESR, so it's important to understand how this affects a capacitor's performance and understand the techniques that designers can utilize in order to mitigate the negative impacts that it has. So this is a great segue into the next section, which is how does a capacitor's ESR affect its performance? Well, let's look back on the analysis we did of the ideal capacitor, where we modeled it as a variable resistor whose resistance was inversely proportional to the frequency of the signal. Now our model has an additional resistor in series with the variable resistor, except for this resistor's value is constant across all frequencies. So if we were to 
create an equation for the total impedance of the capacitor, it would look like this one right here, where we have the term here on the left is the part that comes from our variable resistor, and then we just have a constant resistance value that is here on the right. So essentially, our total impedance of our capacitor is just going to be increased by some constant value. This affects the capacitor's ability to filter out the high frequency noise because it no longer acts as that super low impedance pathway to ground. This simulation shows how ESR impacts the output capacitor. Notice how the output voltage ripple is higher than before. This is one of the primary negative impacts that ESR has on the performance of the output capacitor in the context of our switch mode power supply. So now that we know what ESR is and how it impacts performance, let's talk about some of the techniques we can utilize to mitigate its effects. One strategy that we talked about at the beginning of the video is placing multiple capacitors in parallel. So it may not be super intuitive why this technique uh, works to actually reduce your total output voltage ripple. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of multiple output capacitors in parallel versus one single capacitor. On the left, we have one 20 microfarad capacitor. It has an ESR of 10 milliohms. And then on the right, we have two 10 microfarad capacitors, each with ESRs of 10 milliohms as well. So let's go ahead and analyze the total impedance that a one megahertz signal will see with these two configurations. So doing the math, a capacitance of 20 microfarads will yield 50 milliohms of impedance. Adding in the ESR of 10 milliohms and you get a total impedance of 60 milliohms. Now let's look at the two 10 microfarad capacitors that we have in parallel. So a 10 microfarad capacitor at one megahertz will yield a total impedance of 100 milliohms. Adding in the 10 milliohms of ESR, you get a total impedance of 110 milliohms. And that is for each capacitor in parallel, right? So essentially what we have is two 110 milliohm impedances in parallel. And then if you're going to do the math on the total impedance of that, the equivalent impedance, then that comes out to 55 milliohms of total impedance. So I guess the main conclusion right there is that the total impedance has now been reduced by just using two 10 microfarad capacitors in parallel. But to give you a more detailed explanation of, of like what sort of trickery we did was essentially we just took the ESR and put it in parallel. So we reduced the total ESR. That's what, that's what portion of the total impedance was effectively reduced. By putting the two ESRs, the two 10 milliohm ESRs in parallel with each other, we resulted in a net ESR of only five milliohms, which is reduced from the 10 that we had with the 20 microfarad uh, single capacitor. So to really convey this point more clearly, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of two switch mode power supply examples where one has our single capacitor and then the other has the two capacitors in parallel. Notice how in the power supply where we are using two capacitors in parallel, the output voltage ripple is actually reduced compared to the one with the single output capacitor. So that is why designers often put multiple capacitors in parallel. Essentially what it does is it increases the filtering capabilities of our output capacitor. A lot of times in our designs, the ESR actually plays a significant role in how well the output capacitors are able to filter out the noise. So ESR is something you will see cited in a lot of data sheets. Designers keep a very close eye on this number. So reducing it can have a significant impact in the performance of your power supply. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video and hopefully I will see you in the next one.